Hi, everybody. We're going to get into AC now, alternating current, after having done DC for the entire uh, duration of this term so far. So let's switch screens here and we'll get to work. So DC has been direct current, it still is. But DC is direct current. And what that means is that wherever the voltage is, is what it is. So if we had, say, positive 5 volts, it stays at positive 5 volts. So if we were to plot that over time, it would be Nick, it would be positive 5 volts, positive 5 volts here, positive 5 volts here, positive 5 there, positive 5 there. Okay, so VDC, we're going to start using another term called V average. Okay, so VDC is the V average, the average voltage. All right. So now that is direct current. This is DC. For AC, what we have, AC is alternating current, which means in an AC wave that is um, using zero as its midpoint, it will go from zero to the positive peak voltage, back down to zero, to the negative peak voltage, back up to zero, to the positive peak, back down to zero, to the negative peak, and back up to zero. And that just keeps going and going and going. All right? So what happens here now is it goes from zero to positive peak, zero to negative peak, and it just keeps going over time. All right? So the first thing we need to know here is the average of, a D, of an AC waveform that is riding on zero, in this case, V average is equal to, well, if this positive peak average that positive peak, the average to zero, this point will average out with that point. This point average out every point on the positive half has a negative corresponding point on the negative half. So which means this signal averages out to zero volts. Okay, zero volts is what it averages out to. Now, in an AC signal, we have a quantity known as V peak. Okay, this is V peak, and this is from the middle of our wave to the positive peak or the negative peak. Okay, so this here is also V peak. Okay. So VP is equal to V peak, okay? Now, we have another quantity that goes from the negative peak to the positive peak, and that is called V peak to peak, okay? So V is called V peak to peak, all right? There's another quantity that is known as the RMS voltage. Okay. The RMS voltage. And VRMS is equal to 0 0.707 times V peak. Okay. What this means is, first of all, this is what your voltmeter reads when you work with AC. So if you put your voltmeter in the wall at your house, you'd measure 120 volts, okay? And the reason why you measure that is because your voltmeter measures the RMS. The peak voltage of the voltage in your wall is really 170, okay? It's really V peak. It's really VRMS, which is 120 coming out of the wall, divided by 0 0.707 to go backwards, and we get 170 volts. All right. Now, what VRMS represents, as you'll read, is this represents the amount of work that an equivalent DC voltage would also do. So 120 volts RMS means that that 120 volts AC RMS does the same amount of work as 120 volts DC. All right, so when we're calculating power and those type of things, we're using RMS voltage most of the time. 
All right. Now, there's another quantity, another quantity when it comes to AC, and that is the length of one cycle of the sine wave. Okay, the length of one cycle. So cycle starts and ends at the same place. So this cycle can either start here and end there, or it could start here and end there, or it could start here and end here, or start there and end there, as long as it starts and ends at the same place. Okay, and that measurement, so from there to there, that measurement is called the period. Okay, that's called the period. And the period is given as capital T and it's in seconds. When we bring up the oscilloscope after, when we bring up the oscilloscope, the uh, period will be seen and measured in seconds, all right? Now, what we're concerned about is the length of a period, and we're also concerned about something called the frequency, okay? And the frequency is how many cycles in one second, how many cycles per second, okay? And that is given in hertz, that is the unit, and that is calculated by doing one over the period. That's calculated by doing one over the period, okay? So if we were to measure one cycle of this wave, and it was one millisecond, then that would mean that the frequency, if one cycle happens in one millisecond, that means that that cycle happens a thousand times a second, okay? Because the frequency is one over the period, the period is one millisecond, so the frequency would be 1,000 hertz or one kilohertz, all right? So uh, how do we measure these things? Well, V peak and V peak to peak and the period, okay? we measure with an oscilloscope. And VRMS, we measure with a DMM. Most scopes give you that measurement, but typically we measure with a DMM, okay? So when we're talking about, when we're talking about sine waves, all right? We also need to recognize that in a sine wave, we have, over, the, over one cycle, we have 360 degrees. 360 degrees is one cycle, which means that half a cycle, so from here to here, is 180 degrees. Okay, and then if this is zero degrees here, that means this is 360. That means this is 180. Okay, so if we want to, go like that. So here we have 90, okay, this is going to come at you next semester in a big way. So this is 270, 90, okay? And then we get 45, 135. So we, we go in between there, all right? Um, but it's important to realize that a sine wave is represented at each point, okay? A sine wave is represented at each point, okay? So I'm going to switch screens again. So we have here um, our multi-sim wave, 120 volts RMS signal, 60 hertz, and 
I have an AC voltmeter and a DC voltmeter. Okay, so the AC voltmeter is reading 119.999 volts AC, which is RMS because we're using a meter. And the DC voltmeter is reading 7.6 millivolts. Okay, so there's, it's almost zero. There's, um, because signal sources aren't perfect, they won't always have exactly zero as the base. But 7.6 millivolts compared to 120 volts is negligible. All right. So that is using our meters. Now, what we have to do here is let's have a look at. So we've not gotten into oscilloscopes yet. So don't worry about that. All I want to show you is how, um, how we see what we're seeing here. Okay. So I have in this screen the signal that's coming out of our AC power source, okay? I have the signal that's coming out of our power source. So what we see is we have 120 volts RMS, all right? Now, if we look at our signal here, this says it's 50 volts per division. So here's our signal. 50 volts per division means we are one, two, three, say 3.5 divisions, just by looking by eye. Okay, 3.5 divisions. So 3.5 divisions at 50 volts per division gives us 175, okay? So 175 volts peak. It's not exactly what it is. Right now we're measuring peak to peak. So if we want to add something here, um, measure channel one, two. we're going to measure peak, max, there we go. Okay, so I have here channel one is, is shown 169 volts max, all right, which is the 170 volts I told you about before. Now, Peak to peak, we had, um, if we were to change this again, uh, type peak to peak, okay, we'll go back. Now we have peak to peak, 338, 169. So we have all that. Now, to measure a period, we know it's 60 hertz. So 60 hertz, one over 60 will give us the period. So one divided by 60 is, 16.666 milliseconds, all right? I'm just gonna stretch this wave out and we'll learn how to do that when we get into scopes. So don't panic yet, okay? So what do we have here? Going across, I have a scale of 50 volts per division up and down. Remember the Y axis is voltage and the X axis is time. So it says here two milliseconds per division. So this is, if you follow my arrow, my cursor, this is one signal right here. So here, and we have one cycle, which means this cycle here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight divisions. So 8.2 divisions, we'll say. And 8.2 times two milliseconds, because two milliseconds per division gives us 16.4 milliseconds by I, okay? It gives us 16.4 milliseconds. So that's how we can measure the period. If I was to bring a second picture, change this, I get two full cycles on the screen. You can also, with these scopes, measure the period, okay? So if we, here it is right there. As I said, we'll go through all this when the time comes. So our period is being measured at 16.6 milliseconds. Let's see what happens if I stretch this. There you go, 16.6 milliseconds. So that is one period, all right? So let's change our source. Let's change our source so we could demonstrate something here. Let me go to uh, 20 volts RMS and 1,000 hertz. Okay. That and we're back. Okay. 
Uh, so let's get this on the screen. Let's stretch that a little bit. There. All right. Now, our period. Going across my time scale is 200 microseconds per division, which means that one cycle from starting here, ending there is one, two, three, four, five divisions. So five divisions times 200 microseconds is one millisecond, okay, which makes sense because our frequency is a thousand hertz, one kilohertz, all right? Now, we, um, we also wanna see what our peak voltages if we are 20 volts RMS, that means our peak voltage is 20 divided by 0.707, okay? Which works out to 28.28. And if you read here what Vmax is reading at, it is reading at 28.2. Let's see if we get a better reading if I put more on the screen. All right. So 28.2 is what we're getting for Vmax and one millisecond is what we're getting for our period. All right, this is a simulator, so it's not as steady. I'm going to show you on a real scope in a few minutes, okay? Now, we could also calculate the voltage at any point on this wave at any given time. So we're just going to switch screens again for a sec. If I want to calculate, so this is V peak right here. Okay. This is V peak. If I want to calculate the voltage, I know right here, the voltage is V peak. I know here is zero. Okay. If I want to calculate the voltage at any point on this sine wave here or there, it's easy to do. Okay because it's V instantaneous is equal to V peak, V peak times the sine of the angle on that point of the sine wave, all right? So what we have on the screen right now is V peak is equal to 28.2 volts, okay? That is what we had on the screen with multi-sim. If I want to calculate, so this is 90 degrees, so I know this is 28.2, but I could prove that by saying V peak, which is 28.2, times the sine of 90. And I get 28.2, which makes sense because the sine of 90 is 1. But what if I wanted to figure out the voltage at 45 degrees? So what is V at 45 degrees? Okay. Now, if you notice here, the V is a small V because it's an instantaneous value. It's not a steady value. So V of 45 degrees is equal to, is equal to V peak, which is 28.2 times the sine of 45 degrees, okay? Which is equal to 28.2 times sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so I get 19.94 volts. Is this true? Well, let's go see. Let's go back and see again if that works, okay? So in multi-sim and on this Tektronic scope, which is the same one we have in the lab. So that's 90 degrees. This is 360, okay? So 360 degrees is, um, if 360 degrees is one millisecond, then 45 degrees, all right? So we do one millisecond divided by eight. I do that because there 45 degrees fits into 360, eight times. So one millisecond 
divided by eight is 125 microseconds, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my cursor, it's called, and I'm gonna use my cursor to measure time, which means it goes across, okay? Which means it goes across. So now I use my cursors to go now. So one cursor is, you see them on the screen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep one cursor at the zero position. So if you look, if you look cursor one, I'm gonna put it at zero or as close as I can. There, zero. And then cursor two, I'm going to put it at 125 microseconds. Okay? I'm gonna put it at 125 microseconds. Which is if you look at if you look here, it's telling me the position of cursor two. I'm not sure when you get 125 microseconds. 126, 124, close enough. So there is the point where my voltage crosses at 45 degrees. All right, that's the point where it crosses at 45 degrees. So we calculated 19.94. This is 10 volts per division, which means one, it's almost two divisions right on, which this shows us 20 volts. Okay, so that does work. What if I wanted to know at, uh, you know, at 200 degrees? Okay, well, 200 degrees, I'll do 200 divided by 360 times one millisecond. Okay, so that is now at 556 milliseconds. So I'm just gonna move this some more. Again, we will go over how to do this. I'm just demonstrating. Five hundred fifty-six, right there. Okay, so we will calculate at two hundred degrees on our calculator. I would do twenty-eight point two times sine two hundred degrees, and I get negative nine point six volts. And if you look closely where we are, we are almost at negative one division, which is negative ten. Okay, so just by eyeballing it, we're very close. But there is a way to calculate the voltage at each point on a sine wave, and that is Vp times the sine of theta, or the angle on the uh, oscilloscope. Okay, I just want to switch over. Oh, I, sorry, can I add one more thing here. Let's get rid of these cursors. Turn them off. Okay, so now we were saying that the average, the average voltage of a sine wave is zero, right? Because if you take the average of every point on this wave, it averages up to zero. But you can add, you can add DC to an AC wave. So what happens is this AC wave right now is riding on zero, okay? So it has at 20 volts, right? We calculated 28 volts peak for 20 volts RMS. And it's riding on zero. So zero is going across the middle of the screen here. But we can add what's called a DC offset, okay? So if I wanna add a 10 volt offset, all right? So here's our wave now. If you look, if you look, this is still the zero line, but now our wave is going three divisions up and only one division down, okay? Before, before it was, I'm gonna go here, before it was doing this, it was going like one and a half up and one and a half down, okay? It was going one and a half up, one and a half down. But when I added the DC, now it goes up. So if you look on the scope, the scope is capable of filtering out DC and just keeping AC. But here's where I am now, okay? So I added 10 volts DC to this 20 volts AC wave. So if you look, 
Now, if I start averaging my points, remember DC is eight, uh, DC is V average. Okay, so if I do at um, 20 volts per division, two divisions up, which is 40 volts, one division down, which is 20 volts, and if you average those out, it's 10 volts. All right, if you average them out, it's 10 volts because 40 plus negative 20 is 20 divided by two. No matter what point on the screen now we pick to average out our points, it's going to average to 10. And again, DC is the average. And if you look at our voltmeters, now that it added what's called a 10 volt offset, now I have 20 volts AC still on my wave, on my AC meter, and 10 volts DC on my DC meter, because now we have offset. If I change my offset to five, okay? If I change it to five, so now it's still, it goes up higher than it goes down. Okay, so the wave has moved up. Okay, and if I read just the AC by clicking AC coupling, it goes back down to where it was originally without the offset, but now it's reading the offset, okay? DC offset is going to play a very important part of your course in electronics, all right? So now I'm gonna switch you over to um, a real scope and a real meter. I'm gonna to try to keep a steady hand here, all right? So what I have is, um, I have a function generator, which generates uh, sine waves, square waves, and triangle waves for us. I have one of the voltmeters that uh, we have in our lab in L18. And right now I have it set to, at the same time, measure the AC and the DC. A great feature of this meter. And I have the scope. Okay, it's the same scope that you saw on your screen except this one is two channels and the one in multi-SIM is four channels, all right? So what I've done is I've taken our function generator and I set it up to give a one kilohertz sine wave, the closest I could, 1.0047 hertz, uh, kilohertz. Um, and I set it to give us an amplitude or VP, or sorry, VRMS of 3.04 volts. Okay, 3.04 volts. So, and I tried to cut down the DC offset as close as I could. So right now it's at 79 millivolts. Okay. I probably could get it down a little further. No. I overestimated my ability. Okay, so I've got it there. Now, if we go to our scope, we have three point or three volts RMS, okay? If we go to our scope now, if we go to our scope, the scope is able to measure the RMS, okay? Let's try to get a little closer. The RMS, our frequency, our mean, which is our average voltage, so it's VDC, which is 200 millivolts, which is what I had there, all right? And then we're able to measure um, our V peak, okay? So v, for V RMS of three volts, I get three divided by 0.707, I get 4.24, okay? And this has uh, changed a bit. We just have uh, just a little inaccuracies because of the function generator and uh, we're measuring with two different devices. So um, what we see here now in the scope is our scale is channel one is two volts per division. Okay, it's two volts per division, meaning that each division vertically 
is worth two volts. So when we start measuring in multi-SIM, we're gonna be able to measure a little closer to what um, the peak is, okay? Plus using the measuring tools that we have, that we'll go over. And then we have time going across and our time scale is 500 microseconds per division, okay? 500 microseconds per division. So we could calculate our period. Each cycle is two divisions. Okay, if I move this over a little bit, we could see uh, here that each cycle is two divisions, okay? And at 500 microseconds per division, that means it is one millisecond. Now, if I add DC to this, well, first of all, we'll keep it on the same scale. If I increase the frequency, that means I decrease the period. So watch what happens. If I decrease the period, each cycle gets shorter, okay? And frequency goes up. And if I decrease the frequency, the period gets longer, which makes sense, right? A longer period means less cycles per second, okay? So raise the frequency, lower the frequency, okay? Then if I decrease the amplitude, the peak goes down. If I increase the amplitude, the peak goes up at the positive and the negative, which means the peak to peak also goes up. And since VRMS is 0.707 times V peak, it means VRMS goes up as well. Okay? And then right now we have this set that the zero line is across the middle. So if I add a DC offset, look what happens to the wave. I can take the entire wave and bring it above zero, okay? I can stabilize it a bit. All right, I could take the entire wave and bring it above. Here's the zero line. Here's the zero line where it says one, channel one. And um, I could bring the whole thing above zero. Okay. And I could bring the whole thing below zero. And like I said, when you get into electronics and you start working with amplifiers, your DC offset is very important because you need to take your signal and bring the entire signal above zero, and then you can amplify it. So with an amplifier, you're going to add DC, amplify the signal, and then remove the DC, all right? And those are exciting times. So I'm just going to, um, so that's just an introduction to AC, okay? Um, there's a lot more to come. The uh, introduction to AC, introduction to sine waves. So uh, if you have a textbook, you need to read that chapter that deals with all that. And then we will be adding more as the unit continues. Thanks for watching.